Welcome to Trophy TV. It's that time again. Time to look forward to the summer. <laughs> and the transfer window. The football at the minute is a bit meh. So we'll, we'll do something far, the fun bit, yeah. far better. Watching on Everton players, yeah. yeah. Exactly, and, and hope that Everton can sign some of these players. Uh, obviously, it's been documented, well documented, that uh, Everton are in the market for a right winger, a left-footed right winger, which has been the case for a couple of years, years now. yeah. <laughs> Me and the big fella have done this many times, sat here now and yeah. gone gone through this kind of thing. And he's a good article in The Athletic from the company you work for with regards to Everton, Paddy Boylan put together and with Marcus Insights, Andy and another... It's five, 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 four now, sorry. Four, yeah. So, well, left, yeah. all collaborated to give The uh, Athletic article a bit of oomph about Everton's transfer strategy this summer so give it a read if you are Thank you very much. if you are the uh, athletic members Plug. of the athletic do we yeah. do we um but on to right wingers obviously we had a little chat a couple of weeks ago about right backs because mm. we know that that's a, a huge area that Everton have to uh, improve this summer and are looking Max Aaron's is one that despite it being played now in the article as well. I think Everton are very much still interested in Max Adams. Leverage. Yeah, exactly. It, it's all of that poker playing now, yeah, isn't yeah, it, this yeah. time? So, but obviously, looking wide areas, because Everton don't have a, a natural right winger for a start. You know, the, we had Theo Walcott, and we, we've sent him out on loan. He, he's not coming back. Obviously, his contract's up in a couple of months. He's done all right at Southampton, in and out with, uh, with that. Uh, but we haven't really got someone who plays off the right Hammers plays off the right but goes into the number 10 position mm -hmm. we tried Alex Awobi there it hasn't worked nope. um, and sadly our best probably our best option on the right wing is Seamus Coleman mm. who is going to be 33 soon he's a right back but he's our most dangerous attacking right winger because he drives the ball forward doesn't he that's it so We've had, obviously Everton now looking at, at the right wingers, and we're going to have a chat today, aren't we, about left-footed ones? No, I think I think well, that that's what was hinted to be by someone that Everton have been watching like left-footed right wingers. I think if you think about the way we started the season with Gomez, Tukore, and Allen as your three, hopefully it won't be Gomez next season, but we'll have a four-three-three three or four-two-three-one, depending which we face, might be the formation that we play, and I think. If you're going to have a, a, an attack and fullback, we've obviously talked about a couple of the last week or the week before, then you're going to need someone who cuts inside, gets into, gets into foot, can penetrate into forward areas. And, and offer a running in behind because we've got no pace, have we, in wide mm -hmm. areas? The key for Everton, I think, is when you've got a player like James, is stretching teams out. So, see players like Dom Richardson have got space and only one, one v one. At the moment, because we're quite pedestrian, we don't stretch teams. It's all very congested and narrow, and obviously, we, we, the often the ball is let's play out to look at Dean so we can cross into the box. And you need to be more varied than that because teams plan for that. So I think that's the key. And left foot and right winger coming off that left right winger run in straight lines overlapping. That that that's, looks to be the idea they're looking for. Definitely, and I, I think it does open it up. You see a lot of you know we've seen Liverpool have used that to good effect, haven't they? You know, Man City had used that. Um, oh, Mahrez has been great, yeah. And, you know, exactly, Mahrez. They've had Foden out there. <laughs> um, you know, so the best teams have used it over. You know, Spurs when Bale has played out there for yep. them, he's done all right at times this season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Chelsea. So a lot of the teams use it. You know, Bayern Munich have done that for years. I've knew that. Arjen Robin, Robin, Robin Ribery, yeah, Robin and Ribery, Ribery, yeah. You know, Rob cutting in and bending it in the top corner and stuff. And works, yeah. Um, I think if Everton, Everton can solve that issue down the right hand side. I think you're right. I think it opens everything up because at the minute. To stop Everton creating anything, it really is. If James isn't on the pitch, especially, it's just stop Luca Dean. Yeah, stop Luca yeah. Dean. It's game over. Yeah, and you, when you want to be when you want to be the best side, you need multiple options, don't you? You don't want defenses being able to key in on you, the, the players that you need to. Do. You need to be able to provide them with the space and time in which they need to, you know, essentially create. Mm. I think with Everton, it's very easy because you're not you, you're like do I really need to close Alex Wobie down and wide areas? No, because the crossing's not going to be good enough. I'd rather let him cross. I'd rather go over the heads. Or you know it's not going to hit the face the first man, and mm. that's makes it much harder when Hammers gets the ball. It's two, three men going to the mm. ball, which makes it much more difficult for Hammers. So we need those other options so to, to defend us. Think about them, so we, we've got more time and, and space. Let's dig into it then. Let's get into it. the first one. We're going to look at is Romain Fave. Is that mm. what I was saying? No. His name? I think. I think so. I, th I might have butchered his name. I apologise. Yeah, Fave Fave. <laughs> so Romain Fave was. 
we, we start well my company we started watching when he was in Monaco's B team um, when we with the championship team uh, last season the se- last season it was now and he's an attacking the field at 10 and 8 10 uh, what's happened this season he's gone to Bray he's played as a right winger at times played as a 10 at times so we, what we would call him is like a right 10 he's a right, mm. left footed right winger but he likes to cut inside which again which we've just talked about works he's not I would say direct and fast although he is tricky he can beat a man he can get into those areas that we need to be I mean, he is a really good passer and crosses the ball scores goals I think the, the key with f- favour is that he, he does offer that, that that intelligence that ability on the ball and someone who can cross and create for Dom which has been key we haven't apart from Luca Dean and Hammers at times we really lack that Creativity from the right hand side, which, which he mm. can provide. I'd say he's like a like a Mares type. Mm. He's not because Mares isn't super fast. Is he's quick, no. but he's not fast. And I think that's that. that he's, he's like a poor, not a poor man's Mares, but a, a version of a Mares really. Yeah, he, he remind me a little bit of Ben Arthur as well. Yeah, like yeah. the left foot and a very good dribbler. Yeah. Um, like you say, he's not. He's by no means slow. He'd look quick in our team. Yeah. Our team can't win. <laughs> So he's got a, He can move. He's just not a. He's not a ball over the top, and he's sprinting onto it. But he he can travel with the mm. ball. I was impressed. Like I say, I've been impressed with his dribbling. If you just look at his numbers for play this season, he's played thirty three times. He's got six goals and four assists. Um, progressive carries seven point five eight. Good. Uh, progressive passes three point nine six. This is all per ninety. Uh, dribbles two point nine four game. Shot creation four point eight. Three four point eight two rather a game and ball pressures fifteen point seven. That's so key, that's key as well. Break uh, those numbers down for us. Well, well so the mean? carries the carries means that you're carrying it more than ten, ten, five well ten yards, which is what you want. You want players who are pushing up the pitch. Transition so key in the Premier League now. If you win the ball back early in, 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 a, in an opponent's possession, you turn the ball up the pitch as quick as you can. Someone like him who can carry the ball and then pick a pass with quality at the end of it. That's key. Apart from maybe Corey. Probably doesn't have the same level of quality on the end. We don't really have those players who can break up the pitch with Charleston at times. And that's what we need more of those players who are fast in transition because then you create overloads, you know, 3v2s. Everton don't do that often if it's mm. too slow through the, through the thirds. We don't create man advantages then. So he is good at that. Progressive passes, four players have less because obviously the smaller spaces yeah, up against defences. Yeah. If you look at defence and midfielders, they usually have the most odd centre backs because obviously they're passing from deeper, more space to pass. That's that's fine. Dribbles 2.94. He's not someone who's trying to beat people constantly. He's not like a, a what attack and 1v1 player, but he is. He can create that space and time with his dribble in, in, and creates angles and space to get passes and shots off. Shot creating 4.82. Good, yeah. He's creating a lot of chance. That also incorporates winning fouls in important areas, and he is good from set he is good at creating set pieces, plays, yeah. which again, different options. What we've got is, is always good. And ball pressures, he is quite good at pressing of, of the players mm. we're looking at today. I think he is probably the most. Def- obviously, he's played centre midfield, so he understands that yeah, role yeah. a bit more. I think he is better, you know, quite good defensively, which is mm. key because Carlo at times in certain games will want to play a bit more defensively. And you need smart players. You don't want players who are tactically naive. So yeah, he's he's a good option. Would he be my top option? I don't know. I think you get him for probably less than some of the others on this list. I think he probably cost about eighteen million pound, roughly there there. About. He does have quality and he is a rise and play. He came through the Monaco Academy. He could be a good option. You don't know. Mm. It, it, I suppose there's a, bit, a little bit of risk with that one. Though. And Everton have watched them a couple of times this season. This yeah, season. Yeah. So he is, he is someone who would. You have to look at him. Be, if I look at everything, I'm mean, 23 this summer, but decent, good start. Uh, next one on the list is Musa Diaby, who is 21 years of age. He's a flyer, mm. he's an absolute flyer. Uh, Leverkusen, 29 games this season, four goals and one assist. So what have you made of the RB? So he's one that PSG probably shouldn't have sold, amongst others. They've done it a, a lot of the time, where they've sold players young. He, he actually came into the team and did well, you know, a, a lot of the time. it. I think the key with him is he can play both sides comfortably. He's played left wing back this season, and, and he's also can play right wing. He's left footed. The only slight concern is he is only you know he's only five foot seven, but he's strong, really, really, really fast, and he creates a lot of good chances. Like you, know, if you if you watch you know Leverkusen, he's really good cross to the ball. You can get into those areas. You know, I think apart from Richardson, we don't have, and maybe Coleman, not as often as he used to be able to. We can dribble into the area really and start and get to those those you know, those cut back areas, which we just don't have many players no. who can do, and that that's key. I think in providing hammers with options as well, of course, in runners. 
I think he can score goals, and he hasn't scored a lot of goals this season. But his, mm. look at his assist numbers, the great. And if you look at the you well, know, the, the European games are not on there. That's just Bundesliga. Yeah. He's got another four and four or five assists, I think, in Europe. So it would have him at eight goals and sixteen mm. assists, which I think is really good. If you just go through his numbers here, then like you've just talked about him, uh, uh, progressive carries seven point five four a game. Yeah. So quite similar to so what Faye was before. Progressive passing one point eight seven. But you've already said he's receiving a higher up the pitch, yeah, yeah. so it's not really going to be on. 2.23 dribbles a game. Okay, it's fine. He's much more dynamic 1v1 yeah, than, than he's, a, he's a runner, isn't he? Shot creation 2.89. Okay, that's a bit less. Doesn't but take set pieces. Doesn't take the set pieces, but gets himself in on goal as well a lot. And ball pressure 10.4. It's, it's okay. It, that's one area that he can improve. It, well, but, the problem with in Leverkusen are very highly press high. They don't really track back a lot to wingers. <laughs> the coach Peter Boz was very it was a very open style style of play. So, but at twenty one, lots of work with. That's what you got to look at it. You know, there's a lot yeah. of the base level of skill there. There's someone who can develop into a really good player. I'm still surprised PSG let him go, but mm. that's what PSG have been like in recent years. But no, he's really good cross the board. I think with Evan Dom. That's something you need to think about. Someone who can put quality balls into the area, and he can do that. I think why he stood out for me as well, as well as the next fella we're gonna see. Is it is the pace aspect, and Electric, you know yeah. when we put the other fella up in a minute, he's he's been able to some of the goals he scored this season have literally been a one of cross field forty he's yard gone, ball yeah. he's pulled it down he's in behind yeah. and I think Everton don't have that they yep. don't have the ability to either switch the play and he's in or get him one v one get it in behind there's nobody who can beat anyone really in a foot rate. I mean Dom's quick. Ironically, we never play his that game's ball. Not, his game's to drop off and receive. I know, but I, I, I know, it's, I, it's one tactic I don't understand. Well, the West Ham game when he made that running behind from Michael Keane's yeah. pass, we just don't do that. Mm. I'd, I'd say apart from Hammers and maybe Allen at times, we don't also have that player who's got that long pass, that no, switch no, play, no. which we'll get onto when we discuss with fielders. But yeah. that's that's something that we need because that out, that's an out ball then and, and an ability to stretch defenders. And then it, obviously if he's one-on-one -on -one in the channel, then you've got Dom running in, it's a simple ball into the area and Dom will probably score, but that's, we need those options because at the moment, you've got a lot of players who want to receive defeat, they don't want to go long and no. receive and that, and it makes us too easy to play against really. He just really caught me, I know, I know Kane. Big fan, yeah. Kane loves the RB, doesn't he? But I think he's a, I think he'd be a really talent, good, yeah, big a good talent, option, yeah. like you say, and 21 as well, loads of room to grow and, and I will talk a bit in a minute about maybe why Everton should look at a different profile of player. But next player, no one will be surprised. I'll stop to talking see this <laughs> because it is Mr. Bailey. Who I've been before we done the video, I pulled up our right winger chat from last year. Leon's on, it, of course he is. Um, and I, I, you know what? He's been brilliant again this season. He really has. Um, again, his numbers. You know, twenty three years of age, twenty four later this year. So I think he's had a really good age. Um, 29 games in Bundesliga, 9 goals, 8 assists. When you factor Europe into that, he's got 13 goals and 12 assists. Mm -hmm. I mean, him and Diaby have their impressive numbers from yeah, your, yeah. your two wide players, aren't they? Two young players, yeah. I think Bailey, for me, again, another one. He, he's, a, he's a progressive runner. He can get in behind with the pace. He likes to face people up 1v1. I think he's a good, he's a decent crosser of the ball. Yeah. Gets in the right areas. Does, yeah. I mean, what, what do you? I know well, I bang on about. No, him no, you're right though. You're right. Every too. chat we have in our WhatsApp group, yeah, it's about I, Bailey. I bring it back to <laughs> Bailey. The, the but, key with Bailey, I think, and, and, and you know, I'll start with the only slight worry about him is mm. consistency. He's had, he had one great season. I think it was a two, 17, 18 or eighteen, mm. nineteen. Then he had one Midland season. I think last summer he was probably available because he did a bit of a Midland season. Yeah, last he season. Did, yeah. This season we've seen the best of him again, which is, and that's. If he can do this consistently, he's only 23, he's getting mm. to that peak age now, we'll start seeing it more. If he can keep doing this, then he'll be a hell of a player. You know, he's mm. been on everyone's radar since he was, you know, at Genk. Yeah. He's a he's a super talent. And I think the key with him, and the thing I when I watch him is, he's such a burner when he carries the ball. Yeah. He'll, he'll receive it in his own half, and like that, he'll be in, towards the box. And if it scares teams, it opens, up, it opens up space for other players. And I think we just don't have someone who's going to pick her up and drive forward. We, mm. You need more of them in the modern game. I think that's look at City. City's great passes, great technical ability. You've got people who can beat a man, and that drags someone else out the game to go and cover them, create space. And if you've got go, you've got people like Hamez, you know, Luca Dean who can cross it. It's going to make their job much easier. Would he be someone you'd like Evans? Yeah, get? I think I think if you could get him, I think they'll want you know thirty five million ish. I think if you if you I think Evan have watched him like for what about three years now, so they'll have you know enough reports on him to know what he is and what he's about. 
I think if they can be assured that the off the, you know his, his temperament's right and he, they feel he can be consistent, I think then that thirty five million could be well spent. I think he was, he'd be suited to the English game. I think he scores enough yeah. goals and he's getting more composed in front of goal. You know, I've seen a couple of last night where Diaby put balls into the box and he missed headers by inches. But mm. you know, there he is a good player. I think you're, you're right to sort of you know single him out as a as a potential option for Everton. I I I really like him. I think he's that, that cutting inside what you were talking about before, letting the runner go on the outside, opening the pitch up. He scores a lot of goals really cuts in and it's beyond the keeper before. Play off a proper four three three if you had him in Richards. And he can in his face attack. He can yeah. play wide left where yeah, he's yeah. been playing lately. He can left play wing back at time, left yeah. wing back at times. So and I know Everton watched them quite a few times last summer. Um, he watched them in the two games against Rangers as well, and then obviously maybe just decided against it or just didn't maybe didn't have the the, the money ready or whatever it was. But you know, they, like you said, they had the date. They've got the data on them. They have everything and on them. So you know, I think people have been watching them since what five six years Martin now. Martinez, he was on Martinez. Yeah, they yeah, when Martinez was at Everton, he, yeah, but he was a kid. Wanted, yeah, he was a kid. His, his uncle, or well, his step the father, Carl Butler, wanted them to move to think Germany because they offered them a first team opportunity. But no, he's he's got. It's like Craig Butler, Carl's son. Mm. He, but he's got. He's got everything. It's mm. just that consistency. I think, though, I think he's a great option for Everton. Mm. Again, whether they see it's obviously all opinion. Whether they see that the same, they might think that the different wing is right. But no, he's a, he's a very good player. But have you they've watched? It's them, the type. More if they than watch them a lot, they obviously. Well, it's the, yeah, you're basically trying to confirm what you already think. Mm. In some ways, that you have those final checks. I think. You know, I think at Arsenal before they signed Parsi, I think they'd scouted them thirty five times. That's too many. Mm. You start noticing some bad things. You yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. I think you know after ten, you starting to you know. Starting to do it too Build much, the pitch, but yeah. but the, no, I think the, the key with him is the type of player he is. He is someone who's direct, dynamic, one v one can beat be, be players and score goals. And goals. We just haven't got that. No. That's that's the main thing that Everton miss really. Definitely. If you just go through his numbers quickly, then seven point five one progressive carries. So again, good two, on yeah. the ball. Progressive passes two point seven nine. You've that, explained yeah. the way. Dribbles three point three five. You know he does like a dribble. He's yeah. good. Shot creation three point seven nine a game, which good, is not yeah. bad. But again, five. Edge of the box, yeah. stuff like that, and ball press is 11.3, so a bit better than the RB, but obviously a bit more experienced. The, just, the, the two of them well. need work tactically, but Germany's a very press heavy football system. When you mm. come to the Premier League, a co- coach like Carlo will be perfect for people like this. They, they fix those little, you know, you know, those little errors and those mm. little flaws in people's games. That's what they do. We've seen it, you know, Schengen's under, we talked about last summer, went to, yeah, yeah. and Brendan Rogers thinks he's good, but he won't play him because he. He can't. He hasn't been able to fix those t- tactical errors, mm. which is why he doesn't play, and that, that happens. But I think with Bailey, I think you can, if you fix those things, you'll be fine. Yeah, definitely. Moving on, uh, player who a lot of people will know, obviously from the Premier League this season as well. I think he scored against Everton, didn't he? In the the five two at Goodison, yeah, the free kick. Goal, yeah. But good player, Matthias Pereira, Brazilian. Um, 25 years of age, he's played 30 times for West Brom this season, nine goals and five assists, so he's done it in the Premier League. Obviously, West Brom look like the relegator. It's going to take an absolute miracle for them to stay up now. What have you made of Pereira? I think he's <clears> done good. I think he was on loan, was it Nuremberg or Freeby? I think he was on loan at Nuremberg mm. in the Bundesliga League couple of seasons, so he looked really good. I think he's come to the pre- when he played in the championship last season he looked good and then I think this season he's done really well to be fair. He scores goals, I think he's a clever player. He's not again, he's different than he's more like favour in the fact that he picks up picks the ball in the half space or he comes centrally and picks the ball up and he creates from there. There's some lovely there's some lovely passes, line breaking passes right through the lines. Uh, you know, he is real quality in terms of his passing, and he scores goals. You know, a couple of them in pens, a couple of them in set pieces. But no, I think he'd be a good option. He's, I think, he's one of those what we call a right ten, or a, he's a ten really can play play, play wide right. Sport, no, good player. I think you know, mm-hmm. I think he's a he's a solid option. Yeah, I, I, he is a good player. I think he's look, he's clever. He was good. I watched him against Chelsea the other week when they, they beat Chelsea five two at the Bridge, and he was he was very good. Um, Again, like you say, he's capable of playing right, left, number ten as well. Um, as, the fact he's done it in the Premier League is in, is, it's a tick, is yeah, yeah. good, isn't it? It's a big tick. But again, you don't know. I mean, relegated. How much would he be asking? Twenty five million, maybe. Yeah, I think with him there was issue. He, he probably could have had a better season. Really, at the start of the season, there was a bit of disagreement between him and West Brom because. When he when he, when he originally went on loan to West Brom last season, the Championship, they agreed a contract that was going to start this season because they'd already agreed a move basically for mm. him. 
<laughs> obviously when he turned up the season his agents wanted a better deal for him because he was already proved himself yeah, one of the best yeah. in the championship last season and there was a little bit of a rough start and I think when Sam came in it started to turn for him really and he's been pretty, he's been he's been good this season mm. to say that tick with the Premier League is Premier League proven mm. you know that old that old phrase mm. but we've we've seen that doesn't always work but I think he's a solid option mm. is he the hundred percent right type I'm not convinced if you mm. play four two three one. And you're trying to play a bit more technical, then yeah, I think if you want four three three, I think he's going to end up in you know in Hammers. It's going to be similar types. Really, obviously, he hasn't got the same quality as Hammers. Yeah, I, I, he's a good I, he's a good player. Whether it, like you say, whether or not Everton would go for him, I don't know. He's got he has got talent, and you can never have too many talented players. The Premier League thing does help, obviously. Um, just go through his numbers anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll have a look what he's done. Um, progressive carries. 5.31 a game, so a little bit a little less, lower than, a bit guys, lower than yeah. the likes of Bailey. Uh, progressive passing, 3.36 per 90. Uh, dribbles, 1.37. A bit surprised at that. I thought he'd be higher when I was... You know, because in your mind, yeah, you have yeah. an image of a player and what I've seen. And obviously, these are the real numbers. So, 1.37. Shot creation, 3.55. So, three and a half a game. It's not bad. Gets fouls, whatever. Yeah. But ball pressure, 16.7. So, Sam expects it, doesn't he? You know, uh, don't be wrong. He, he plays number 10 for Sam because he can't, he's not going to... He's not great to cover the full-backs. But... Mm. Again, he probably needs a little bit of work on that. He's a young player. Would that be a pro- would that be an issue for you? Because if Everton are trying to improve that right hand side, I think that's fine when your right back's Mason Holgate, say, yeah, yeah. And, and you know that he's gonna not gonna go anywhere. If Everton are looking to improve that right hand side and get a progressive right back who's gonna do eighty yard doggies or whatever for you an overlap, and you you play your fella playing in front of him isn't. Isn't well, them it's out. the jigsaw, isn't it? These are the jigsaw mm. pieces that you have to put together. If you're going to play, in, like we'll use Aaron's and say Pereira, mm. don't be wrong, they're not the greatest defensively, but then if you've got a mid three, field three of, say, Decore, Allen, and Kamara from Marseille, who's a proper sitter, then you can say to Decore, basically, your role is to cover the right, cover back, the right back area. Yeah. And then you've got that settled. I think that's the key with Liverpool. That's like the correct. Well, that's what Liverpool did. It's the well, correct didn't way it? to do though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, that is because then you you basically organising your positions tactically. Then they call it rest defence, don't they? Mm. So if your full back goes and your right winger goes, instead of bombing on your midfield, it goes actually I cover the right back mm. area, and that, that that's the way. to But do you it. can still get one of the if if we had a three in midfield, if it was like you. Oh, you can still say to Corey, but then you've got Decore, Alan. Decore, because you've still got Alan, and you've you'd have... way, yeah, exactly. And there's different ways you can do it. You know, you could have in certain games, as we discussed in the car, you could have Hammers as the ten with the two wire players and Dom, and then you just say to Alan to Corey, basically at times the core you run in but actually just, just sit, sit and protect and get our full yeah, get the full, on, yeah exactly yeah. so there's, there's ways that they would think yeah don't be wrong you've got to be cautious about playing two poor defenders on the right hand side mm. Liverpool won the title with two poor defenders on the right hand exactly, side because the yeah. field work so it, it, yeah. it's just how you you, you know you, you count for that really. and you'd argue that City I mean Carl Walker he, he won't get me wrong he's, he's, he's okay yeah. he's got better and better but he's pr- predominantly for years he's been an attacking fullback rather than a defensive fullback. So, but sadly, we won't have eighty percent of the ball, so we can limit people's attacks. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. It does help that. It does help that they don't really give you the well, ball. That's how they. That's how they, they stop goals. They control the ball. But, but then, yeah, that's something for us to do better, isn't it? Because that's if you listen to Carlo Ancelotti speaking. He does want to do that. I just don't think we're very good at it. No. If you get better plays, maybe we'd have a bit more of the ball. I think, so. I think the, the key for Carlo is you need options and you in different games because Carlo likes to tinker, doesn't he, with the mm. system, depending on who we play and account for the opposition. Whereas, you know, your Klopp just plays 4 3 3 and he does obviously account for the opposition in mm. some ways, but they play the same every every game. Mm. I think if you, we you need to account for the opposition too well at Anfield. Not this team. season, no, no, to be fair. <laughs> so, but overall, yeah, you yeah. need. That that ability to be flexible, and I think different types of players would be good. It's just we've got to have the right fits, and I think Everton need pace, mm. they need dynamism. So Pereira and f- favour, yes, the good options are the probably cheaper options than maybe a Bailey, but I think the type that Bailey is is what we actually need yeah. more because we just haven't got that burn and pace. Totally agree. And the final one we're going to look at today, and there is others. There's well, we'll we'll discuss another couple, but we won't have to stop it. But the final one we're going to look at today is. Florian Tauvin mm-hmm. at Marseille. He is a he's on a three, which is why we put him on here. He's twenty eight, so he's not quite Everton's profile, but a free transfer makes him makes him um, a, an interesting option if you're trying to bring three or four five in without yeah. having to spend too much. He's had thirty four games for Marseille so far this season, eight goals and eight assists. That's just in league earn. Um, haven't put anything else on there. Um, 
what have you made of him? Because obviously a lot of people will remember him at Newcastle and it, it didn't yeah, work it didn't out, work. but it was a good few years ago. Well, what have you made of him? Yeah, so when he's, since he's been back at Marseille, he's been, it's been super, really. Mm. That's, he's been their best player at times. He is a, in Pep High, it's been great, but he is been fantastic and he's got a lot of applause and rightfully so people say it's the French League yeah okay a lot you know English players don't really move and do well let's be honest though so <laughs> you know same balance yeah, I guess yeah. there but no he you know he's a very technically good player mm. smart intelligent picks up good spaces great left foot scores goals creates a lot of chances really good cross to the ball not bad defensive exercise he's got older he's got, he's got, he's got certainly better than that Again, not that sear and burn and pace that you want. He is a, not he's, slow though. He's not slow and he can mm. beat a man, but he's not he's not that real burn and pace that mm. it maybe ever need. For a free, this is where the flip side goes. He may be a free, but that'll mean he'll want a big signing on fee mm. and probably a lot of money and wages. And with that, and this is where you've got to sometimes say you, you bring those biases into the bias against him. Obviously, is the fact that he was here and he didn't adapt. Mm. And at twenty eight and wanting a lot of money. It's a big cross. Yeah, it's, a gamble, you, you got, it's a big gamble, but he's a good player. Yeah. I think he might go to Italy and do well there himself. I think mm. he'll, he'll probably do well. But I think and he was injured for all the last season as well, so he has picked up a couple of injuries. He's a good player. Back though. with thirty four games this season. Oh, he's good, he's a good player. No, no doubt about it. Mm. I think I think he's someone you have. I think Everton have had to do the homework on him because any time a good player comes up on free, you've got to do the checks and balances to mm. make sure that because you could save money in certain areas. Transfer fees obviously is an issue with Everton with the Premier League rules and what have you know. I think he's a good player. It's just that I just don't think he's the right player for Everton this time yeah. round, really, if I'm honest. Yeah, I mean, he, he wouldn't be my choice, but he is he's a, a hell of a player. He's a good option as a free, and he's got a nice left foot. But we do, I guess we do, we do want to move away from 28 year old players, don't we? Cause well, he, I, I guess if we were, for example, if we were to finish third or fourth this season and we thought we're a couple away from the title, then maybe mm. a chance it and you go, we'll get some ready made players it, yeah. in. The problem is, is but if we keep doing that, Eventually, we're going to have to replace them all. We can, and as we've seen, it's very hard to turn the squad over. The next, the next stage really is where we sign younger players and we build, we build with them. Let's come back to that. Let's Take come back. On. Let's just go through these numbers because we will, we'll come back right, to that on. as we finish. Um, progressive carries eight point eight. Uh, one eight a game, which mm -hmm. is good, very yeah, good. Very progressive good, yeah. passes four point four six. Again, he's up there higher than. Than the others, uh, dribbles one point nine eight, mm, not bad really. Uh, shot creation three point no four again. That's very similar to a lot of the other ones. And ball pressure thirteen point seven, so not bad. He does press quite well. Um, but well. like we said, twenty eight for me, not the right age group. I understood last season why we we went for Hammers. I understood why we went for Allen. The core race a little bit different because he's twenty. He was twenty seven, and he still, for me, still got four or five years left. He was late start to because, be fair as well. yeah, and because of the athletic type he is, I think, I think even if you slow down a little bit, he's still good enough to, to yeah, be doing. Yeah, he's not to run forward as much. Yeah, but you know, we do want to be operating in. Marcel Brand has said that when he come in, we want to be operating in the twenty to twenty six age bracket and building. So, this is something we so. spoke about. In fact, before we do get on to that, because we'll finish with that of what we should be doing. There's a couple of other wingers who we've left off who are right-footed right wingers who, who could have quite easily gone on there and Everton have been linked with. Uh, Chuck Weezy's one of them. He's left-footed, but yeah, he is. It, so, so sorry, Chuck, he's left-footed, but he's, he was a bit more expensive, which so, is why yeah, we took so him off. Yeah, so he's been a bit of reality. We'll talk about Sarr in a second as yeah. well. I like both players, and I've liked both of them since, since they really came onto the scene. The issue with both, though, is, and I think Sarr's done pretty well in the Championship this mm. season, is... You always expect more, and they, as they get older and older and older, you're thinking, "Is this just the player they are?" Yeah. I think with Chuck Ways, he's still young enough. I think he's only 21. I want to see more, though. I think mm. he, in spurts, he looks really talented. He's got good player. pace, yeah, blistering pace, blistering pace, pace can score. He's only scored six goals through this season. To be honest, when I was looking around Europe, not many wingers have scored a lot of goals no, this season. No. It seems more of a striker season than in years gone by. It, it's very, it's a gamble really with him. Mm. I think I'd like to see him do a little bit more, but maybe once he does that, he'll be out of Everton's price range, and and that's the risk, the risks you take really. How much do you think we? You have to pay about 35, 40 million for Villarreal yeah. to let him go. Is is Bios will be what probably hundred million because that's what they do in Spain because obviously it's well, mandatory. He's, he's got a big game obviously this week, the second leg against yeah, Arsenal. He wasn't great last week against yeah. them, so that's and that's, that's an he can be inconsistent, and you know as good as he can be, you always want more sometimes because mm. you know the level of talent he's got, and when he bursts onto the scene, you thought. 
sort of this lad's going to score 15 goals in the season soon. Still not quite happened, so we're just still waiting for that. What about Ishmael Asari? You've he's just been good. Yeah, he's been good for the first half of the season. He really sort of didn't really get into no, it. Obviously, no. Watford have got a lot of managerial changes. Ivic came in and it didn't really work. And it, and what for the managerial changes? Yeah, sure. well, we did that the same with Udinese. It worked mm. for them there. But I think when Munoz come, he's given them confidence. Mm. He's, he's got 14 goals, he's got four assists. He should be much better than now in the Championship. I think he was good in the Championship. Mm. But if you look at Ivan Tony, the way he's smashed the Championship, I would have expected, I know Sar's a little bit younger, I would have expected that for his talent level. And he still hasn't done it. So he's still, mm. he's been on the scene since he was what a, a tw- 18 at Mets and, mm. and then Wren's paid all that money for him and, and then at the World Cup in 18 I was expecting a big breakout and he's, I'm still what five three or four five years later expecting still that he's still that. waiting and don't be wrong I'd have him all day I think he's, mm. much, he's again direct scores goals pacey mm. It's that consistency that yeah. you need, and Everton, you know, Everton fans. <laughs> let's be honest, we haven't got the patience for players who are going to take a year or two years. That's mm. maybe we should have in some ways because Everton can't go out and sign those ready-made Bruno Fernandez types. We're going to change us. We just can't. Yeah. But I think they, there's some question marks around Sarri, even though I like him a lot. And then the other couple, just very, very briefly, Rafinha. But I think he's out of our price ring. But he's done really well, hasn't he? he plays off the right for. Leeds and yeah, or Rafinha, yeah, so we've yeah, watched him a couple of times yeah. this season. Too expensive. I think Leeds won 50 million. You could have got him for 17 last summer. He's done really well. He's good, he? creates a lot of chances, really classy player, scored, you know, scored some good goals. Should yeah. win it against us, of Yeah, course, and he's just he, he drifted out of our price range. Anthony, who's a left footed right wing who plays for Ajax, probably a little soon for him. He's a good player. Good player. Again, th- that type of player. We would discuss uh, uh, Seema, who plays for uh, Sparta. Uh, Slavia, Slavia Pride. Pride but Sparta. I think he's more of a, I think he's, he's more of a striker. Yeah, striker. he plays on the right for them. So we'll have him. We'll have him in our striker. We'll, we'll, we'll go striker. deeper into Yeah, into we'll just strikers. But yeah, so there's... And Wendy as well was the final one. Yeah. Emmy Brent, Wendy. Now but. he's smashed the championship to the level that you'd yeah. expect. The only issue I find with Wendy is I think him and Hammers in the same team... It depends what style you play. You could do it. He's just not that. He's just not direct enough. He'll want to pick up the same positions as yeah, Hammers yeah, doesn't. Yeah. And if we were replacing Hammers, yeah, all day. Yeah, take Bundy, yeah. stick him in that ten. He creates all our chances for us. I'm just not sure he's the right fit. And sometimes, talent, yeah, all the talents in the world, and he's great. Mm-hmm. It has to be the right fit. And yeah, I think course, just yeah. at this moment in time, we need something different. We do. So just very briefly, then to finish, we've touched on certain players there. Talvin, obviously, we want to move away from. That's that kind of thing, and and this is something me and me and Ped were talking about it yesterday, and I know it's something you're you've been big on as well. Is that where Everton really where Everton are? Because I think there's we were talking about it in the car on the way in. Is that there's still a little bit of a confusion as, it, or it seems like the thinking's a little bit muddled. It might not be. It's just on the outside mm-hmm. looking in, and I, I said to you, I'm open that. Last summer was the first bit of clarity we've had between where the manager and the director of football get the players that we need. But Everton as a club, is it time? Is it time that we started looking at players and thinking, well, instead of thinking where the final, where the destination for them, where, where the the final resting place for them to achieve everything they want, we get players who. See us as a bit of a stepping stone, but who are gonna then say who are gonna then move on? Because if if you get those players who are on the way to the Champions League, then surely they can carry it towards it. They'll carry you better. And if you don't actually get there, but you get close, they're the then players that you can go. Well, you know what we paid thirty million for him and Michelle them for fifty or sixty, mm-hmm. rather than maybe getting. The 27, 28 year olds who are, who well, it's, are it's the on two, the way it's, down. I guess it's the two different looks about it. I think, I think from the outside, certainly maybe different inside the walls of the club. I'm not making any assumptions. Is that the, basically every year Everton think we've got to make Europe this season? The fans' expectations for us to make the top six every season, whether right or wrong, we just do. We've all mm. you know, big club. We always have those beliefs. To balance that out, though, Everton. Uh, by, say you keep signing 28 year olds there's going to be a time where you've got too many and they're going to all age out and you have to replenish again but you've got no one to sell yeah, and we yeah. found that over the last couple of seasons we have, yeah. you know, we're, we're, the easiest players we found to sell would be Luchman Vlasic no, don't get me wrong they're no great shakes for Everton they're easy to get them out though because they've got that potential mark mm. over them Keane's going to be easy to sell this summer yeah. rather than Bernard because Keane's got that you know, still that overhanging potential on him if you want to try and turn a squad round, you need to sell assets. And I know people go sell on, off, uh, sell on FC. And it's fine, you can say it's sell on FC all you like. But in three or four years' time, you'll be the one crying when we can't buy new players because we haven't, we've got too many older players. And mm. that's just one side of the story. The other side also is that 
like you say, look at Sevilla, look at Dortmund, look at Lille. They've made the Champions League because they've signed those players and, and they do get picked off. And Liverpool originally, when the FSG came in, they were a bit like that. They've got Suarez taken off them and then Coutinho. But then they bought, they replenished the side with those players. And, and that's, that is the, the, the smartest way to do it. Because what you're doing is you've got players who are getting better with you and they're dragging you up. Because you're buying hungrier players then. Mm. I think this is the problem. I think Everton have signed too many players who thinks Everton's the final move, maybe, or maybe the final contract, maybe, whatever it may be. I'm not going to name names. Rather than getting players who think, like, like Richarlison, now, people, he's not had a great season this season, but Richarlison's got ambitions to play in the Champions League. And the more type you have like that, the more they'll drag you towards it. Dortmund do it so well, obviously, you know, smaller budget than most, but they do it so well. Lille have done it. And that's the key for Everton. They, they can't keep. I know we'd like to sign Kula Bali, Aguero, Coutinho. They're all great players. But if Everton don't want to be just like a one season, two season wonder, we want to be what Spurs have been. I know we want to win stuff, but in the top six, ten years on the bounce, then that's the way we've got to think. We've got to have consistency. We can't have teams aging out every two years. Because Hammer, what's going to happen now is Hammers has been great, alan has been good. But when we're still maybe building, trying to get into the top four, they'll be on the downside. Then we'll have to replace them. We don't want to have to keep doing that. Mm. So don't be wrong for free. And for, you know, you, you sign all the players on freeze, eight million like Delphi, who he hasn't worked out all day. But don't commit significant funds to all the players because it's one. Look at Arsene Wenger. Arsene Wenger never did it to the end, and he, he always found maybe to his detriment at times, of mm. course. But that's how you replenish the squad continuously. You don't want to have a lot of money tied up in all the players. Um, I suppose the other thing, just to finish, we shouldn't be afraid of losing players either, should we? If we get, do you know what I mean? What, what I mean by that is, I don't like selling on, but there's only. Probably half a dozen teams in Europe who aren't selling clubs, really. I, mean, I think Man City really? are the only ones who've never had to sell. I think Chelsea mm. had to sell Hazard, but the rest of them have had to sell, mm. all of them. And they, you know, Man City never had to sell Aguero, for example, but even Man United had to sell Ronaldo. Yeah. There's always someone bigger, and Everton have got to understand that. Yes, you can lose your players. Obviously, if there was more confidence in the recruitment, then I think Everton fans would be okay with it. Look at Dortmund, they lose the player, best player every other year. Haaland's going to go, the fans go, who's next? Well, a team that everyone's banging on about now. Leicester. Follow yeah. Leicester, follow Leicester. Canty. Chilwell. Chilwell. Mahrez. Yeah, Mahrez. They've also even drink water. I know he's not pulled up any trees, but he was part it. of that team. Yeah, wasn't he? Harry Maguire. Yeah, they've they, got, you know, for five Spans years, gone, yeah. five or six years on the run, they've had to sell players because teams have come in for them. And they'll still have to indeed, sell yeah, players. Indeed, he'll, have to indeed he'll be the next one. If, if Madison gets any kind of level of a yeah. form going consistently, someone might come and want to take him. And they just go, OK, off you go. And you're right, it, it's something that we see We've seen the Dutch clubs do so well. I actually, Ajax, they sell it themselves. They almost, have fans, a, yeah. they almost have a party when you, they sell one of their players to like an English club. Or Barcelona, whoever it may be. They, they keep, even I said the other day, Van der Sar said they make nine million of TV rights. We have to sell. So I think that's buying into it. I think that I think Everton fans have, have lost patience. I think and the way project really upsets Everton fans. But it, it's not about project. I think Stuart Webber, the Norwich director of football, said the best. Football is an infinite game. I think we get too lost in season by season when actually football keeps going and going and going. It's another season after every season. And that's why he said, I'd rather spend £5 million on a state-of-the-art gym than on a 30-year-old midfielder because that gym will be here for another 10, 15 mm -hmm. years and I, get, I, might get, I might create three players out of that gym. And that's the way you've got to think. You can't, it's got to balance, you've got to balance short, medium and long term like, you know, get, get gains, really. And that's what Everton have to understand. Don't mm -hmm. be wrong. You have to bring Hammers in because you needed a level of player. You have to bring Allen in for that midfield. And Carlos talked about that in his book, the technical leader and the physical leader. Now we've got them. Let's start replenishing the side with good young... young. And we're not talking 19-year-olds. We're talking mm. 22, 26. That's the, we're the, the start of the peak ages or entering the peak. That, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And, and this summer, I guess, will we'll tell us all what we, what we need to know. If, if Everton go out and... Because I think in the main, I said before, in the main... Alan, Godfrey, Hammers, Decore, Robin Olsen have all been successes mm. this season. Uh, and I think Niles and Kunku who come in for a quarter of a million pounds has done Looks all nice, right. Yeah. Looks like he, you know, he needs a bit a more, more work. Then, yeah. He might need a loan just to get him up to that next bit. But So I think if you look at it, and, and then if you tail onto that, Jared Branthwaite, who came in last yeah. January yeah. under Carlo Ray, yeah. in general, say, let's just, let's give... Let's say they're both now working together. Right? And, and Brand has bought some good players as well, and other ones haven't worked out to get that, and I understand the And I'm, listen, I'm critical of them as well, because I think we, it, the squad upsets me, the fact there's no legs, there's no athletes in it. 
But I guess if you look back for all the time Carlo's been here, the recruitment so far has been decent. Yeah, and you know whether and Kunk will ever be anything brand ways, you're going to get more than you pay for them, and and again that helps the bottom line. It, yeah. There you go. Like I say, we'll know this summer. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Who out of those wingers do you think Everton should be pursuing this summer? Or is the people we've left off who you think, well, I'd rather have this player or let us know in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up. Follow Andy on Twitter. No, That's L Pavate. FTBL. Um, check out that athletic article which goes into some of these players as well Paddy Boylan's done there mm -hmm. uh, give the video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and if you want more live videos daily then become a patron see you later